to send them on out. Come here. A backyard breeder busted. There was feces and urine throughout the floor. There was blood throughout the apartment. It was one of the most disgusting, most vile situations I've ever been in. Tonight, and only on Denver 7, body camera video shows the moments deputies rescue malnourished puppies from a horrible living situation. Fight to rebuild it and fight to get the money for the things that were inside of it. Fighting the ultimate fight to rebuild communities demolished by the Marshall Fire. The reality is how many families do I know that weren't underinsured? Two. And now rebuilding comes in an added cost. How much are you underinsured? We believe we are underinsured by at least $200,000. Tonight, Denver 7 Investigates brings serious concerns about the underinsured to state leaders. Plus, why all Coloradans should think about reviewing their policies. Tonight, the Denver City and County Building lit up in blue and yellow, the colors of the Ukrainian flag in support of Ukraine. It's now been just over 48 hours since Russia launched its invasion. And at this hour, Russian troops are closing in on the capital city of Kyiv. And this is a live look right now at Kyiv. We've heard reports of explosions and heavy fighting near the Kyiv Zoo, which is around two and a half miles from the city center. Now, up until this point, the fighting and blasts have been in the outer suburbs as Russian forces work their way toward the city. Well, today, Ukraine's president warned he believes Russian forces will storm the capital tonight. And on top of the fighting now, the Russian invasion is leading to a humanitarian crisis. The U.N. tonight estimating hundreds of thousands of people in Ukraine are crossing the border into Poland and Moldova. Most are women and children waiting at train stations and at border crossings. Ukrainian men between 18 and 60, so those of fighting age, are not allowed to leave the country under martial law. They are to stay and fight. And for Coloradans who are waiting and wondering about family abroad, they're trying to do everything they can to get their loved ones to safety. I try to send my uh, parents to Poland just like today, uh, probably like five hours ago, but my mom, she almost had a heart attack uh, last night, so she is not able to travel. She is already uh, not feeling well just because of the situation. Our team will monitor developments overnight and bring you updates. Now, meantime, tomorrow there is going to be a rally at the state capitol at 11 a.m. An unlicensed breeder is busted. Malnourished puppies living in deplorable conditions were rescued from an Arapahoe County apartment this week, and now a woman is facing multiple counts of animal cruelty. Well, tonight, Denver 7 CB Cotton has obtained exclusive body camera footage showing the moments deputies rescued those dogs. Yep, just send them on out. Puppies being sent out from a crate. Come here. Hi. And carried away from a life of filth. Hello. A situation responding deputies say they'll never forget. I haven't seen anything to this extreme in my career. On Tuesday, Deputy Mark Hurwitz responded to an apartment complex off of South Quebec Street. We originally responded to an uh, animal call, and it was two dogs fighting, and a woman had gotten in between the two and got bit. And once Deputy Hurwitz talked to the woman and went inside the apartment, okay. he went to care for one of the dogs injured from the fight. You're okay, Bubbies. Is he okay? Yeah, he's sitting up. And right away, he knew animal control needed to get involved. With approximately 10 dogs living in it, there was feces and urine throughout the floor. There was blood throughout the apartment. All 10 dogs were seized by officers, five of them only puppies. They were all in one crate. All five puppies, they were all really emaciated, very skinny. You could see ribs, you could see hip bones, you could see the outlines of the skull through the skin. A report says deputies could find no food or water available to the dogs in the home. A 34-year-old woman was issued a summons charging her with 10 counts of misdemeanor animal cruelty. In the body camera video, the woman implies she's been selling the puppies for money. I can say that somebody wanted to buy one. No, he already paid. We tried to contact the woman to find out why she was keeping the dogs like this, but we were unable to reach her. Through a public records request, Denver 7 also obtained this video pertaining to the case. In it, a woman can be heard yelling at the dogs. Look at my sh Anybody want some dogs, cuz? Cuz these dogs gotta go, right? They're free. By the end, some of the older dogs appear to start fighting. No! But Deputy Hurwitz says when he arrived... Okay, okay. 
I know, I know, I know. He noticed no aggression. All the dogs were really sweet, really nice. I had no issues with any of the dogs. Only dogs in need of care. We spent the time and took the effort to really care for these dogs because it makes us safer, it makes the community safer. We do care about the people that we serve and and then day that also includes the animals that we serve. Thankfully, all of the puppies will be okay. They're being cared for at a local shelter while court proceedings play out. What's going on, huh? In Arapahoe County, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. Well, for weeks we've been reporting on how the majority of Marshall fire victims discovered their insurance policies will not even come close to covering the cost of rebuilding. So how is it that so many policies fell so short for so many people? Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kowaleski found that even the newest policies have left homeowners underinsured. We have both. 2619, Free house fire. The house is fully engulfed. Here we are in heavy fire, heavy fire. This is, I don't know, it's just not even identifiable as our home. All that rises from this charred landscape are decades of memories. Two antique clocks I inherited from my dad. Suburban homes that seem sheltered from wildfire. Totally unprepared for something like this. Gone. It's painful. That's what's left of our house. And all of these Marshall Fire victims thought they were covered. We're insured. We're going to be fine. But turns out we have about half of what it will cost to rebuild. How much are you underinsured? Somewhere between four and six hundred thousand dollars. Two fifty to four hundred thousand. By at least two hundred thousand dollars. Each has homeowners insurance. None had enough. And it's the homeowner who has to pick up that difference in cash. I think it's a systematic problem. There should have been a fail safe. How big of an issue is under insurance? So we're, we're working to understand exactly how big of an issue it is. Michael Conway is Colorado's insurance commissioner, the agency charged with overseeing the insurance industry. There's, there's a potential under insurance problem when you have large scale disasters. Conway says they've launched an investigation to figure out just how big the under insurance problem really is with the Marshall fire. We're the first to start to gather the information related to a specific fire. The state has asked insurance companies for policy limits for every home loss that windy day in December. The type of data that we're gathering, that's going to help us find the magnitude of the problem and then find the solutions once we have that magnitude. And this isn't only a Colorado problem. According to United Policyholders, an insurance advocacy group, two thirds of wildfire victims in the U.S. are underinsured. There's many layers to what contribute to underinsurance from how large a fire is to price surge supply chain issues. Carol Walker is an insurance expert with the Rocky Mountain Insurance Association. Is the insurance industry to blame for some of the under insurance issues? It really is a two party contract between the insurance company and the individual. So there really are responsibilities on both sides. She points out it's the homeowner's responsibility to update their insurance policy every year. People don't update their insurance as they need to. But our investigation found homeowners who did update their policies are still falling short. I was told that we were covered. 28 days before the fire, Sean Howe got a new insurance policy through State Farm. It was absolutely represented to us as a policy that would replace our home in the event of a loss. This was her Louisville home, but after getting multiple estimates from builders, she's being told it will cost her north of 1.3 million to rebuild. That's more than double what her insurance plan covers. I think I did everything right, and I'm still in this position um, of having to decide if it makes financial sense for us to rebuild our home. What is your message to those homeowners who feel like they did everything? What were the reasons for that individual? Is that an individual situation or is it more systemic? Those are all things we're looking at right now. That was the entry area. You can How has since filed a complaint with the Division of Insurance? which brought the whole rebuilding process to a halt. The trauma continues on a day to day basis because you have to fight for for everything that you were initially promised. What is it like being back here? You know, it's hard to imagine sort of what was here before. When Other victims like Cindy White and Mario Janet Poor updated their policies in the last few years. There is a level of responsibility from the insurance company. All want to come back. People loved their neighborhood. I'll want to rebuild. Everything that we had that we owned in this world was in that house. But still don't know if they can afford to make up the insurance gap. These building conditions didn't start last month. This shouldn't have happened. The three victims we talked to are still waiting to find out exactly how much insurance will pay. Rebuilding, they're being told, is still years out, making it even harder to find a builder who will lock down a price. 
The state hopes to have a much better picture of the underinsurance problem in a few months. I'm Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. And the Marshall Fire was a wake-up call for Coloradans to check their own insurance policies and what it covers. And if you haven't looked at your policy in over a year, think about calling your insurance agent. Now, you don't want to find out you're underinsured when it's too late. That's right. And here are some tips from the Rocky Mountain Insurance Information Association. Avoid insurance minimums. Sure, you can save some money monthly, but your home is your largest investment. Paying more monthly could save you a costly headache in the long run. Also, call your insurance if you do any home renovations, any upgrades, because that adds value to the home, and then you might have to increase your coverage to reflect that. Also, understand the difference between market value and replacement costs. With our market right now in Colorado, it could be a huge amount more that you could sell it for than what you bought it for. What your insurance cares about is the cost to repair and rebuild your home in today's dollars. Those are those rebuilding costs, not what you can sell your home for. And that brings us to our final tip. Calculate the replacement value of your home. Typically, that's building costs per square foot. But with supply chain issues and the pandemic, the cost of lumber has climbed significantly. The price of lumber, in fact, three times higher now than when it was before the pandemic. The National Association of Home Builders estimates that alone could add up to $20,000 more to a home build. Single digit overnight lows for the front range again tonight, but a nice warm up on the way. I'll let you know what your weekend looks like. Live your life, don't feel guilty. Nearly two years since the start of the pandemic, the governor says it's time to get back to life as we knew it. So if you choose to go without your mask or attend a concert with your friends or simply go out to dinner and you're fully vaccinated, then by all means do it. And strong defense could mean a winning team. What the Broncos defense could look like under this new leadership.